Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jojo Siwa. I hope you guys are doing good. I have a quick comment, maybe. I don't know what this is. I want to put a name to this series, okay? I'm going to do a lot of these, like, still worth it videos about, like, older devices, how they hold up in, like, 2019 and going forward. So I, being the creative person that I am, came up with an acronym for these videos. So I was thinking about, like, still worth it and or, like, some acronym I can make up with those words. I came up with two Ys, S-W-I. What that stands for is, is it still worth it? Question mark, probably at the end. So I want to name this series double eye swipe that's probably what i'm going to name it from now on if you guys hate on it that's okay i'm just going to probably call up your mom sorry to come over and tell her what you're doing and why you're even commenting negative things but that's just a quick little update so if you hear me talking about it in the future about the acronym direct them to this video right here i'll probably mention it in other videos coming up too but but concerning this device the galaxy s8 plus this is one of those phones i never owned prior to even making this video i did own the galaxy s8 i did an update review last year i'm going to do one this year as well i'm going to do a double eye swipe about that but this this was the bigger brother of the Galaxy S8 and you know since this is my first time reviewing it I don't have much to compare from last year and a lot of changes next year obviously that'll be a lot better but there were still a lot of changes with the Galaxy S8 plus that happened in 2018 so before going forward let's go ahead and go take a step back and see how this thing is held up you know throughout its release so it did come out in 2017 it got released with Android Nougat and right now it does have Android Oreo so that is a decent thing at least it got one version of Android but also it's going to get another version as well. And I just love seeing Androids getting updates. And also in 2018, we got new hardware. We got the Galaxy S9, the S9 Plus, which were the direct predecessors of the Galaxy S8 Plus. And we also saw the Note 9 get released, but there was a humongous announcement from Samsung as well. So prior to this announcement, you know, Samsung had their TouchWiz UI, which really wasn't that good. I really never liked it, even though they did clean it out later on and it's still a little bit better now. I still don't like it. I just think it's too weird and just too kind of in your face and bulky, but Samsung actually redesigned Designed quite a bit of it and they're relaunching their software and they're calling it one ui so it's not touch was anymore and i saw a lot of videos about the betas and everything and they actually cleaned out a lot of it of what touch was really messed up so that's definitely a good and a humongous change that's happened fairly recently now i got my hands on the galaxy s8 plus obviously i wouldn't be doing this video if i didn't but i was not able to get beta access for the galaxy s8 plus that kind of sucks a lot i think there's some people who were able to like kind of hack into it a little bit and put it on the s8 plus and that's actually one of the main reasons why i even got the galaxy s8 plus now you know i spent way too much money way more than i should have on this thing because i needed one super fast and there were just a few people selling it in my area so i was like screw it i might as well spend more money get it sooner than later and literally i could have gotten an s9 plus for the amount i spent on this sa plus not even joking because i was trying to do one ui video on it but i ended up not being able to do it so i ended up wasting a bunch of money but it's completely okay but at least i got content for you guys you know what i mean but that pretty much brings us to where we're at now so looking around the body we have a fairly large 6.2 inch super amoled screen it's 144 40p i love this thing this screen is so good it's very solid and it's very very good looking okay now the interesting thing is on this display it does have a bit of 3d touch on it just on the home button though i really don't know why they didn't put it on the entire surface and i really didn't find any need to use the 3d touch aspect of it i'm not gonna lie though it does feel kind of good when you click it but other than that there's really not too much of an advantage of having it now we do have a slimmer bezels on it so that's definitely a cool thing this was the first time we saw samsung kind of take an initiative to lowering decrease the bezels on it and I'm not going to say Samsung really pushed bezel-less trend, but they did have a really huge part of it. And looking at the bottom, we have the USB-C port, and we also have a headphone jack still too. So really, really cool things. If you're interested in those two things, this phone has it. So you're not really giving up too much if you're getting this phone. You're actually gaining some hardware compared to a lot of phones that are still being released today. And looking on the back, we actually have a fingerprint sensor, which is definitely a good thing, but it's really in the weirdest and most awkward spot ever right by the camera. I would probably never even use it up there. I don't know why they put it up there. They eventually did put it lower on the Galaxy s9 plus but it's still kind of weird why they even put it up there in the first place but that is completely okay because this phone makes up for it in the micro sd card slot this phone does support it that's very very cool and i'm so glad you know samsung still they did it in the note 9 i'm pretty sure they're going to keep it in the galaxy s10 they can remove the headphone jack i'm pretty much used to it if they just keep the micro sd card slot that's super super awesome and overall i think this phone still feels very premium i don't think it feels cheap at all i can tell you 100 different phones released even in like 2017 that don't feel as good as the galaxy s8 plus us. Now turning it on, we do have Android Oreo on it like I stated before. It has gotten several security updates throughout last year as well. So it's definitely cool. Nothing that really like changed up the phone itself or made it gain new features. It was mostly security updates. Android Oreo actually gained some features, but other than that, it's really basic. 
And overall, I think the software is stable. I don't have too many crashes or bugs or anything like that. I did find some couple things, but once I updated my device, they actually kind of cleared it out. So I don't really know even know what it was. It was like random settings box, dialog boxes I was getting. But like I said, once I installed the security update, it fixed. I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but really the only problem was TouchWiz. And even though it's bloated and everything, I'll admit, Samsung puts tons of features in their software for sure. And you know what, since it's getting Android Pie and we kind of have to wait until One UI comes out to have a really good opinion on it, I'll leave it at this, you know, it's still getting another year of support at least. So who knows, you know, maybe it'll go ahead and turn around and make it that much better. But the software as it is now is definitely not bad. It just depends if you're a fan of TouchWiz or not, in my opinion. Could I use TouchWiz UI every day? Yeah, probably. I wouldn't complain too much, but depending if you're even worse than I am and really integral about like little details and things, then maybe TouchWiz UI isn't that bad. But you know, obviously I might be like overhyping it a little, maybe making it worse than it really is, but it is what it is. Now, this is probably the thing you guys are waiting for the most, the performance aspect of it. So in terms of the hardware inside of it, it does have the Exynos 8895 chip. It has an octa-core CPU clocked at four gigs. And on some variants, it does have six gigs of RAM. So it really just depends on which variant you have. And honestly, like I can't find many reasons to complain about the performance of this phone. You know, now the question you guys have, are the new phones faster? Obviously, yes, they're probably faster, but you won't really care about that that much. You know, you're getting a 2017 year flagship. You're not spending a thousand dollars on it. So you shouldn't expect that type of performance or anything. But at the same time, I don't think those phones are five times faster. I don't think those phones are even like twice as fast. I think the Galaxy S8 Plus as it is right now is still very, very fast and it's still very good. It might not be the fastest thing out there, but I don't really think it matters that much because very rarely are you going to be comparing the Galaxy S8 Plus to another like much higher top end phone in your lifetime. It just doesn't matter if, if it's fast enough for you. That's all that matters. And for me on my usage, I've tested tons of phones and I personally don't care too much about it. Like I think the performance is very, very good on this thing. Which leads me to the next thing and I got really heated there. The gaming is also exactly the same way. I view it the same exact way. Casual games run perfect. I say that in every video. Obviously I have to say that because people get mad when I don't. And have your games run perfectly fine as well, okay? You're not going to have too many problems with this. And surprisingly, going on with the performance thing, I had the Galaxy S9 Plus here, which is a very phenomenal phone. I love it. And I honestly, like, I didn't even remember to compare them side by side, but I couldn't even find that much of a difference. Or maybe the Galaxy S9 Plus was faster, but I don't find one being way faster than the other. Like, with the Galaxy S7, I could kind of tell, you know, like, Obviously it's not slow, but the Galaxy S8 Plus is a little bit faster than the Galaxy S7. I remember that just from messing around with them. But between the Galaxy S8 Plus and the S9 Plus, I don't really think there's that much of a difference in terms of performance if you're not comparing them side by side. So in terms of overall performance, I think it's still very, very good. Now switching to the camera, it does have a single 12 megapixel sensor on the back, but it's a very good single sensor, okay? I think it's very, very good. One thing about Samsung phones I noticed with their cameras is that they tend to like brighten the image quite a bit. I don't know if it's the screen itself because the screen is really good or what the case is, but, but it seems like it kind of highlights the camera or the photo a little bit better and I actually like that a lot. So the camera is still solid. It can shoot 4K videos and it can shoot even shoot 1080p videos at up to 60 frames per second. I wish there was like a 60 frames at 4K or 1080p at 120 frames, but I really don't even use slow-mo at all. So that's so it's definitely a very good camera. And one thing about touch was like I always say, Samsung just annihilates so many features in these. They did it with the Galaxy S5. I remember that. I don't know why they did it with that, but they put tons of features in these cameras. So you won't really be feeling like you missed out on something versus like on iOS cameras. They really like, you have to go into the settings app to change a lot of things. And they really make you feel like you're missing out on a lot compared to a lot of newer. So the Galaxy S8 Plus's back camera is very, very good. And front camera is pretty decent as well. It's eight megapixels. I'll say one thing, Snapchat still sucks on it, but it sucks on every phone but overall you know the back camera and the front camera they're both very very solid options now going to one of my favorite topics about this phone the battery life it definitely is surprising but in a very good way okay at first glance i kind of assumed that it wasn't good only because it was like so much bigger and so much larger like i was looking at my, like iphone 10 and i was like man my iphone 10's battery life isn't you know phenomenal as it should be i figured the galaxy s8 plus was the same way they advertise it as being like an amazing battery life this and that, but I don't think it's going to be that good. But once I actually used it, the battery life on it is very, very good, okay? It's 3,500 million hours. I think it's on the better side of things for sure. Uh, standby time is very good as well, you know? I probably won't be able to kill it in a day on my somewhat mild usage, but if your usage is heavier, then obviously it'll vary per person. But the battery life, like I stated, is definitely on the better side of things. Now, some other notable things to note, okay, it does have the fingerprint sensor on the back. Like I stated, it's in a weird location, but honestly, it's whatever. At least it has one. It is IP68 dust and water resistant. So if you're going swimming a lot of your round bodies of water for some reason, first of all, you shouldn't be bringing your phone around you there, but this phone is water resistant up to, I think, 1.5 meters for 30 minutes. So that's a feature in and of itself. And it does have a headphone jack, like I stated. So 
in terms of hardware those things are pretty much where you're at now the huge thing that has changed since last year is actually the pricing of these so i believe samsung still sells them i maybe i don't know but regardless you should not be buying this thing new anymore because the used prices of this phone have gone down tremendously and i found this all across the board with almost every single android phone so last year when i looked on ebay and all these other websites i found that they were selling for around the 350 dollars price mark but now they've actually came down to about that 250 dollars price mark so i think that's a very solid discount and that usually comes when phones get older and older and they stop being supported the galaxy sa plus is still supported so that's kind of a huge thing to note and that kind of leads me to answer the question is the galaxy sa plus still worth it in 2019 i will go out and i will say yes absolutely this phone is still a very very solid option okay the build quality is awesome okay it still has software support the headphone jack is there for all those people who want it it still has a fingerprint sensor the screen is amazing and to top it all off it has gotten cheaper throughout this year and even last year so when you compare this year's prices to last year's prices this phone's only going to get cheaper and once the galaxy s10 comes out this phone's just going to get cheaper then too so i will 100 say that this phone is still worth it in 2019 and to believe it or not i didn't even mention custom roms or like rooting and roming this phone because i don't think this phone really needs it right now because it's still supported once it's not supported i'm probably going to make an updated video talking about why you should probably custom rom it but regardless i think this phone is still a very solid option if you're in the market for a used top end android or you're coming from an iphone you want to test the waters of android without spending like hundreds and hundreds of dollars you can probably find one for like around 250 so what i'll say is if you want the cheapest option the one you can spend the least amount of money on i'd probably recommend going on ebay or craigslist and checking out the prices there but what i would always recommend you doing is actually getting certified refurbished okay for most of my main devices that i use on a daily basis i tend to go with certified refurbished most of the time they're much easier to get they're much safer and usually they're in better conditions and they usually have warranties as well so i'll link the cheapest certified refurbished one i find on amazon i would recommend getting it from there not only to help you out but you also help out the channel at the same time every sale we get actually comes back and it helps me make like these videos and more giveaways and get more phones and all these different things so so if you want to ever buy any phone or literally buy anything on amazon go get it through that link actually so you can help out the channel at the same time and it doesn't cost you any extra money so that's pretty much it man if you guys have any questions or anything like that leave it down in the comment section below hit that like button that'll mean so much but definitely hit that subscribe button every single subscriber we get really does count so it'll mean so much if you guys could hit that also check out the other links down in the description as well my twitter my instagram my second channel all those links are linked down below I would really appreciate it if you guys could check it out. But more importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.